Guys, it's me over here with another Xcode tutorial. Uh, don't mind the budgie in the background. Sorry about that if that annoys you. Um, but in this Xcode tutorial, I will be teaching you about how to integrate plist files into a UI table view. And that basically means how to populate a table view from a remote server, basically. Um, now, if you haven't seen my plist tutorials, I recommend you go check them out here. And if you haven't seen my UI table view tutorials, I recommend you go check them out here. Um, in this tutorial I will be using my table view from my table view series however it doesn't matter which table view you use as long as you populate it with either an NS mutable array or NS mutable dictionaries or NS array or NS dictionary then this method will work so it doesn't matter which table view you use as long as you populate it with an array which most people do then it should work. So if we go here into our app and let's begin the code Okay, so as you can see, I have a number of arrays here. Now, let's say I keep finding out about new dogs. I keep finding out about how these dogs breed or whatever. Okay, that was slightly weird. <laughs> I don't know what goes on in my head. Okay, uh, let's say I find out new information about dogs and such. Um, and I keep wanna updating my app. However, I can't update my app unless I wait six weeks for it to go through the app store just for one dog or one text change or something however if i populate this dog array with a plist i can then update it on my server or on my website and then download it back into the app when the user opens it without them even knowing and voila the dog array has updated itself added a new thing about the pug into there simple as that so what we're going to that's basically what we're going to be doing now i need to teach you how to do it so if we go into the dot m here i'm just going to show you what i currently have in my dog array as you can see i currently have one dictionary and that one dictionary contains three values a name an image and a description and here are the values for those those keys um so what i did for purpose of saving length in this tutorial um, what I did is I used my write data tutorial, how to read and write data, which is my first tutorial. I used that to write this into a plist, to write this uh, stuff into a plist. Then I edited that plist. So here is the modified plist. As you can see, we now have three objects instead of one. The first object is the original one, which is the first three that you saw in my app just a second ago, in my code even. And the other two I have added, and simply add something, just click, add, and there you go, that I've got a new string in that one. However, I must make sure I have the key exactly the same in each item, otherwise my app won't work. However, I can have a different, obviously I can have a different, um, uh, description, image, and name, value. Otherwise, there'll be no point in me adding these. So, there you go. That is my new updated plist. And as you can see, I've spent quite a while on this. You know, I've added two extra objects. I don't want to copy these objects out back into my array here and update the app via the App Store. I want to put this file onto my website and then load it back into the app from my website. So, to do that, it's as easy as this. Delete the current objects in the array, like so. Then go up here to where we initialize the array. And instead of init by itself, we go init with contents of the URL, ns URL, URL with string. And in this here, I type in my URL. Now you must make sure you spell your URL exactly right. Otherwise, it won't work. It will crash when you try and add the object down here because this object contains an invalid URL. So I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna grab my URL, copy and go down, and then paste my URL in. So as you can see, I've already updated it to my server, and there you go, there's my data. So I can now simply build and run, and oopsie daisy, it's on the other screen, <laughs> uh, and hopefully it should launch and as you can see, we have dog1, pug, and smiley pug. There you go. One, two, and three. And we still have our cat arrays, 
and we still have our snake arrays that all works still and as you can see it's flowing fluently it doesn't crash at all and one main reason for it not crashing is because we used the init method if we do this method which is dog array oops dog array space equals space ns mutable array array with url like that contents of url whatever like that then it will crash after one use so i will be able to load the data but then when i release the dog array and then call it again to do this it will just crash because this is only supposed to use once so make sure you use the init with contents of url not array with contents of url now right in front of your eyes now i'm going to add a new dictionary so there we go we have our new array so what i'm going to do now is upload this to the server so i'll be back in a minute once i've uploaded that to the server all right guys i'm back and as you can well you can't really tell but i've just uploaded it to the server as you can see we don't have it populated yet but if we go back and then we click it to reload as you can see crazy pug is now being added and as you can, i didn't even leave the app all i did was update the plist put it back on the server all the user had to do was go back and press that you can even implement a refresh button up here to refresh the table view from the server um, just so they can check if there's anything being added and there you go there's our crazy pug smiley pug still there pug still there everything else still works as you can see so yeah and now you can just populate your arrays from your server without needing to do anything and as you can see our code automatically takes care of adding a new cell for us because we're clever like that um so yeah we don't need to worry about any of that all we need to do is change our code um well change our plist sorry and there you go a new cell with a new contents so i hope you enjoyed that tutorial um yeah that's it for the plist tutorials any requests on plist tutorials you want to know about just let me know and i'll try and help you out on them uh thanks for watching this tutorial uh don't forget to follow me on twitter at faircake apps annotation should appear at the bottom of the screen there uh please give us a like because well yeah it lets me know you like these videos it helps out a lot tell lets me know what my market's kind of interested in so i can make new videos um don't forget to click on some of the ads in my videos because they always help as well and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. And see you in my next tutorial.